Welcome back everyone, and today we're making mace, and not just any mace, original recipe mace. So mace is actually a generic brand name as it's called, like Band-Aids is, is really a brand name. Band-Aid is a brand, but it's just been used so much, it's really used as a generic term, and mace is one of these. But there's many different formulas now, such as CS gas, capsaicin, which is pretty much pepper spray, right? There's all these different formulations. But original recipe mace use a very specific ingredient called chloroacetophenone. And that is this lovely chemical right here. And this stuff will absolutely make your eyes singe. And this was mace's original active ingredient. But mace usually just didn't consist of chloroacetophenone. It consisted of chloroacetophenone dissolved into a solvent. So here I've recreated that original mace using alcohol, ethanol, and 1% chloroacetophenone. So this right here is original recipe mace, and yeah, it will it will sting. So let's get into the video, make some of this, and um, test it on ourselves. It's a terrible idea, but I'm gonna do it because I hate myself. So let's get into it. To make our mace, we're first gonna need glacial acetic acid, which is pure acetic acid. Yeah, don't sniff this stuff, it will burn. I've, I've learned, I've learned the hard way. Some British person's gonna go wild over this. Pure vinegar, holy crap. Let's go ahead and add in 100 milliliters of our pure acetic acid into this 1,000 milliliter round bottom flask. Well, it's actually kind of a flat bottom round bottom. <laughs> See that the bottom of it's flat, so yeah, I don't, I don't know what you even call that. And now for our mace, we also need acetophenone. So you've probably seen this plenty of times in my videos before. I use this to make histamine, the essence of allergies, and serotonin. But we're also going to be using it to make mace. I know what a versatile, uh, versatile chemical here. And I love the smell of it. It's like a nice almondy smell. Um, it's just so good. Ugh. It smells a little bit like poop, but that's mainly because I have a little bit of indoles still in here. And indoles is what gives poop its its smell. Anyway, now to our flask here, we're going to add, yeah, you can see the yellowness of it. That's that's the indoles. Anyway, um, now we can go ahead and add 20 milliliters of our acetophenone into our flask here. Give that a nice swirl. Okay, now we can uh, set this aside over here, and now we can pull out the pool chemicals. This ginormic jug contains a very small amount of TCCA, trichlorocyanuric acid. Um, this is pretty much just those pool pellets you put in to chlorinate your pool. Um, yeah, this stuff has gotten ridiculously expensive. Good thing I'm just making mace and don't actually have a pool, because, whew, that would be expensive. Remember, make mace, don't make your pool blue, instead make mace. Here's our TCCA, comes in these little chunks, and this is 20 grams of it here. This is all we are going to need. So I'm gonna go ahead and grind this up into a nice fine powder, because, well, that's, that's what we need. So I'm pretty sure these TCCA tablets are literally from the 90s, like, my dad had it for a jacuzzi that I don't even remember having. I'm 23 years old, so, but hey, it, it works great. And I'm gonna load our TCCA into this round bottom flask here, which will act as a chlorine generator. Okay, we're almost ready to start making our mace. But the next step we gotta do is attach our bubbler to our, oh hey, okay, that uh, open for me, yeah. Attach our bubbler to our flask containing our acetic acid and acetophenone. Oh, this is like a weird smell I'm getting. It's a mixture of vinegar and almond acetophenone. That's, those are two smells that don't really go together. And now I'm going to fill this addition funnel up here with some 31% hydrochloric acid. Also another cool chemical. As you can see, we are making chlorine gas because as some of it accidentally spilled down the pressure equalizer, but that's, that's fine. Yeah, chlorine gas is also highly toxic, so don't do not do this. I just said that, I'm going to take this off for a second and fill this with calcium chloride, and hydrous calcium chloride, because this is a drying agent. It means it dries things. So, what is this whole contraption doing? Well, over here, we have a chlorine gas generator, as you can guess, because it's already generating chlorine gas that yellow gas you see in there. Chlorine is an element, but it was also used as a chemical warfare agent um, because it's highly reactive. So when you breathe it in, it, uh, it destroys your lungs. Not a good way to go. Anyway, 
So in here, we'll have hydrochloric acid drop down our TCCA. That will release chlorine gas. Chlorine gas will then come through here, go through this drying tube and get dried out because we don't want water in our reaction here. It'll then flow down, bubble into our acetic acid slash acetophenone mixture. And then that will chlorinate it, forming chloroacetophenone, our active component in MACE. And then it will also produce hydrochloric acid. Well, HCl, not hydrochloric acid, because technically it's not an aqueous solution. And that will flow up and out this tube here, and that will flow outside to get rid of the HCl. And yeah, so let's go ahead and um, run it. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is drip a small amount of HCl on our TCCA. As you can see, it is producing chlorine gas immediately. And we'll add a little bit more. Now our chlorine gas should be flowing through this whole contraption here all the way down into there. As you can see, there's bubbles coming out. Right now, that is probably just air, but any minute now, we should start getting chlorine over which we should see a nice solution color change when that starts to happen. Now, as you see, the solution is starting to turn more yellow, which means we're starting to get chlorine gas into the solution. So that is good. And uh, yeah, we're pretty much just going to release all of our chlorine here into there, and we should get our chloroacetophenone, our active ingredient in mace. and all of our TCCA has been used up. I did use a molar excess over here, so you know the chlorine that's left in there is fine. Um, over here, we have a clear solution. It definitely warmed up a bit over time, but it's not too cold and not too hot. Um, the fan has been keeping it cool, so that's good. Anyway, I'm going to uh, disassemble this, get this chlorine generator out of here and out there and let it vent out. And then um, we will collect our product and hopefully my eyes don't absolutely burn to hell. Here's what we got, a noticeably kind of more dense, oily liquid. Um, and, well, to see if the reaction works, it should have produced HCl, so I'm gonna blow some air into it. And as you can see, there is HCl clearly in it. So, our reaction did uh, proceed to some extent. So let's do our workup. My eyes aren't singeing yet, so that's good. Okay, now to a beaker of ice water. I'm going to pour our solution into here very carefully and see there is some kind of precipitate on the surface there's an oil and that is our chloroacetophenone yeah um yeah never mind our product is down there <laughs> not up there okay so i have the fan on so i don't singe my eyes yet let's go ahead and pour off our top liquid it probably can contain some chloroacetic acid there we oh man that's a nice white chunk that is the active ingredient in mace right there let's uh break that up and, and collect it hey i can see why that is used as mace i just turned off the fan and holy hell it first hit my nose like i can feel it burning up my nose and on this eye here i have a burning sensation it is not good at all. And it's a solid. Oh, and that's just from turning off the fan. It, this is this is bad. This is bad. Okay, I'm throwing the goggles back on. <laughs> gonna, gonna need these. So now we need to filtrate this to get rid of any excess water. I'm not doing a vacuum filtration. Don't don't even think about it. I know if I do a vacuum filtration, it's going to fill the air and just and poison me. So let's uh try this gravity filtration. Hopefully the goggles do some some helping here. This is an awful camera angle. What am I doing? That right there is the essence of mace. How is it burning my eyes through my goggles? How? How? These don't have air vents in them. I've made other halogenated compounds that also act as kind of like tear gases, but none of them are as bad as this. Okay, we're gonna have to vacuum filtrate this and I'm, I'm gonna make it fast. We gotta vacuum filtrate this real quick. Just to pure it down, we're gonna do it real quick. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off. 
the stinging in my eyes noticeably increased. Okay, we just gotta wash it a little bit more. We can survive this. Okay, no more, no more, we're good. We got nice purified crystals. Okay, this was an awful idea. It just like intensified another wave. And I'm not even close to having, a, I'm not even being sprayed in the face with it. Here's our active ingredient in mace, our chlorocephalone. Let me get some action shots of it. Man, those are some nice looking crystals. Nice, but God, do they cause pain. My eyes are still burning. Okay, I put it in a cage because it growled at me. <laughs> oh, this stuff is awful. Now we need to make actual liquid mace, the kind you can spray, and we'll bottle it up too. So first, we're gonna need five gr oh, sorry, not five grams, that would be insane. Um, half a gram of our chloroacetophenone, also known as CN gas, even though it's not a gas. Kind of like mustard gas. It's called mustard gas, it's not a gas at all. Normally it's sprayed as an aerosol. Okay, and now we need to dissolve it in a solvent. So original mace used like a mixture of solvents, including propylene glycol to butanol and some other stuff. I don't have all those. So instead I'm just gonna dissolve it in just methanol, uh, organic solvent. So this should work perfectly fine. Actually, I'm gonna swap the methanol for ethanol. I don't know why. I just have more faith in ethanol. A little bit uh, more non-polar, so we'll probably dissolve it up better. Okay, now we're gonna add 50 milliliters of anhydrous ethanol. Okay, now that it's all dissolved up, we have our mace. Um, so this just would be pretty much traditionally sprayed onto someone, which um, yeah, you'd not be having a good time there. And yeah, so let's bottle this up and we'll have our mace. Okay, so here we have our mace canister. Um, this was like a pressurized container, but I drilled out the center. So now I'm going to instead add one of these push sprays and then add this back on. So I'm gonna have to do some modifications here. Okay, we've got all of our parts now. So first thing I'm going to do is fill up our mace can with our mace. Okay, now I'm going to mix up some epoxy. Here's our mace can. Beautiful, let's um, give it a little test run down here. Oh yeah, oh, that works amazing. There we go, we'll have our own original mace. Okay, now it's time to really give this stuff a test. So what I'm going to do is spray it on a hot plate here, and this will pretty much cause it to enter the air and it should have its effect. Um, obviously, I don't want to spray it directly in my face because it is an alkylating agent and, uh, you know, toxicity concerns with it. So that will give just enough to, you know, kind of get the burn but not have any um, too much serious effects from it. So, yeah, heat up the hot plate now, and uh, we'll see how this, how this goes. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and give a shake and give it a spray. And once that heats up, we should uh, really start getting the effects from it. It immediately hits the nose and throat. Holy crap. <coughs> Makes you want to cough, too. Yeah, okay. Surprisingly, it's not attacking my eyes very bad. But, oh, it's starting to get my eye. But the nose and throat, <coughs> that's where it, um, that's where it shines. Really on the mucous membranes. Jesus. Yeah, if this was sprayed directly in your face, you would not be having a good time. Man, the way you just, it enters your lungs, jeez. You just feel it in your throat and nose. This is only a 1% solution, too. Oh, starting to burn this eye a little bit, but surprisingly on the eyes, not too bad. But particularly on the uh, throat and nose. Well, there it is. In a form where it's really heated and evaporated mainly affects the nose and throat. That makes sense. That's where you're breathing air through. Um, the eyes are just burning very slightly. Not, not too bad. So yeah, there it is. Original recipe mace. And of course, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me torture myself. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.